Hey, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, this is Elder Tamel Brown, and I got a great panel with me tonight. Uh, these great men and women of God are here tonight, and we are going to discuss the topic, Are Your Boundaries Keeping You Single? And so this is going to be a live, candid discussion. Thank you so much for everybody being tuned in. I appreciate you. Uh, definitely feel free to comment and let us know how you feel about the discussion that's taking place. Uh, we definitely do appreciate you uh, for tuning in. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get ready. We're going to go ahead and get started. And so I'm going to allow uh, my guests to introduce themselves. We're going to start from the top to the bottom. And I'm telling you, get ready. I'm telling you, we're going to discuss some things. It's going to be encouraging. It's going to be enlightening. And you may have some disagreement, but that's okay because I think in disagreement is where we grow. When we uh, have disagreements, I believe we can grow. We can learn from one another because everybody thinks differently. Everybody is not the same. And so these discussions offer an opportunity for us to bridge the gap of communication between men and women. And so I think that's a beautiful thing. So get ready. I'm going to go ahead and start uh, on the top uh, with my man, Joseph. Hey, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us, you know, whatever you'd like to tell us about yourself. All right. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank you for allowing us to be on this show. Uh, my name is Joseph Polk III. Just call me Joe uh, during this time. Um, I'm one half of the relationship ministry, He Said, She Said, where we use the uh, word of God to address uh, relationship topics that impact our world. I'm also a self-published author of the book 18, As God Spoke, I Wrote, available now on uh, Amazon. I'm also a life uh, coach and relationship coach certified. Um, I deal in the area of absent is pure. Um, so I'm excited to be here. I'm here to learn and also to share what uh, experiences that I've had that can be helpful to others. Beautiful, beautiful. Go ahead, Andre. All right, all right. Hey, uh, to the hosts and to the panel, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure uh, to be invited with this fine group. Uh, as uh, Tomel has mentioned, my name is Andre Harrison. Uh, I am in the Midwest. I'm in Indiana uh, currently. And, uh, and professionally, I am an auditor. I do audits. I have an HR background. Uh, I love Jesus. I'm involved in my church. Uh, I, uh, I help uh, uh, organize and facilitate a group called Authentic Manhood. I was going to wear the shirt tonight and represent, but I uh, couldn't find it. So maybe next time. <laughs> Avid Eagles fan, Eagles Nation. We kind of joked offline about that. Uh, on Tomel's a Cowboys fan, but hey, we're good, right? <laughs> That's me in a nutshell. Absolutely. Like you said, we're going to have beef during the football season, but, you know, we're good right now. We're good right now. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Alina. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Elena Walker. I go by... Elena or Sunshine. Those are my names that I go by. It's actually easier for a lot of people to just call me Sunshine because most of the time they don't get my first name correct anyway. So I am located in Dallas, Texas, and I actually um, am a Sunday school teacher at the church that I, a high school Sunday school teacher at the church that I attend, and I am a teacher. I teach uh, middle school, high school, and that's what about it for me? Thank you all for having me on here, and hopefully I'll share something that will help um, enlighten or encourage someone else to uh, improve in their boundaries or in any other way that they can grow as far as in relation to boundaries and relationships. Beautiful, beautiful. And yes, last but not least. I think you're on mute. We still can't hear you. Okay, this is what I'm going to, uh, if you can hear me, uh, go in and come back out, and then that should fix your audio, hopefully, and uh, we'll, we'll hear from you in just a moment. 
But so, yes, we're definitely going to go ahead and uh, introduce Andre in just a moment. But um, with the panel that we have on right now, uh, these brothers are some good brothers. And uh, this sister, uh, Dr. Alina, uh, most of them are from the group Single Save No Kids. And we have Joseph, a really good brother that I've had the pleasure of having some discussions and, uh, you know, uh, finding out more about him uh, through the discussions that uh, we previously had on different panels. And so um, I'm sure these uh, these men and women are going to give you some some good knowledge and hopefully you'll be able to relate to them. And and uh, we just all grow as the uh, body of Christ. And so I'm going to go ahead and get uh, Andrea back in here and um, we have her reintroduce herself. Hi, I am Andrea Enoch and I am from Cincinnati, Ohio. I lead the singles ministry group at my church, Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic. And I've been doing that now for 10 years. <laughs> so I have a lot, a lot to say about this topic. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm in various singles groups, um, both um, in person and online. Professionally, I do compliance reviews. So I'm always, you know, asking questions and checking to see if, you know, we're meeting certain standards, both spiritually and naturally. I also do a little bit of singing and traveling to different countries, but I am happy to be here. And I pray that the Lord allows me to say something to singles to help to encourage them to not only be, um, you know, content in their singleness, because that's what the word of God says. Wherever you find yourself, whether you're single or married, be content. And that's always been like my goal with leading a singles ministry is to be content where you find yourself. Now, if you want to change that status, that's okay. Um, so, you know, just to shed some, a little bit of clarity tonight, I'm really looking forward to that. So thank you, Tamil, for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's wonderful and great to have all of you on the panel. Thank you so much uh, for participating and being willing to be a part of this discussion. I certainly do appreciate you guys. And if you don't know me, my name is Elder Tamel Brown of Fruit Bear Ministries. Um, I'm an elder in the Church of God in Christ. I'm also getting ready to uh, start my own ministry, my own church, and start pastoring soon. So be praying for me uh, going into that office. And also, I'm a singer and songwriter, so uh, look out for the single, It's All About You on Fruit Bear Recordings. And so um, I'm really excited about the uh, music project as well as the ministry. And so I know you guys are ready. I know you guys are ready to get this discussion started. I know you've been waiting, you've been anticipating, and I am ready as well. And so we're going to start off the conversation uh, with this first question. And this first question concerning... Are your boundaries keeping you single? So the first question is this. Uh, do you have space boundaries? And I'm asking every one that's on my panel, you get a chance to answer this question. Do you have space boundaries such as not sitting close to one another, uh, no kissing, no hugs, or any intimate contact? And I'd like for you to explain, are your boundaries effective when it comes to space boundaries? And why do you feel this way? And we're gonna change it up a little bit. I'm gonna start at the bottom. I'm gonna start and go with Dr. Alina and then anybody else can jump in after she goes ahead and <laughs> answers and expounds on this question. Well, just throw me out there first. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> so um, question is, are your space boundaries um, keeping you single? If I said that correctly, hopefully. So um, I would say yes. <laughs> sometimes I'll put that as sometimes and I'll give reasons um, because there are certain things that I do not like. I'm okay with certain things and I will go over those things. So yeah, I mean, we're doing a transparent conversation and um, and I'm very vocal on mentioning that ahead of time. So for instance, it, that's why I said sometimes because if it's a matter of affection, I don't want affection like right off the bat. Like if I'm just getting to know you, then I don't want you easing in to kiss and hug and all that. And I actually mentioned this ahead of time to people 
you know, if I'm get like if I'm going on the first date with a man, I don't know. That may be too quick, but for me, it's not too quick because sometimes I feel it's a way to help men out, I think, because sometimes I notice that men don't really know if a woman is okay with them easing in for kids or hugging and all that. And so I mention it ahead of time that that's not something I'm comfortable with doing the first get to know or seeing you just so. They won't, you know, they won't be wondering or, you know, so, and then if someone does certain things, I do prefer initially to ask, like if I'm like, if it's the first time going out with me or even the second time, then, and I guess it could depend, but at least for sure that first or second time, I, I expect the man to ask, don't just get into my personal space without asking, can I hug you? Is it okay to get a kiss? I'm talking about the first or second time. Now, if we're in a relationship, I go about it different. If it's already in a relationship form, then I don't have those specific type of space boundaries. But if we're still in the stage of getting to know each other, I expect for a man to ask me. So that's just more um, my opinions on that. And so that's why I said that as far as it's uh, space boundaries to answer the question, I said yes, but then I think it's also sometimes because it, it, it kind of depends on the situation. So that's all I have. You know what? I, I will say I, I like what you had said about how it helps the man because the first time that I got engaged, and I've, I've been engaged three times, you guys, um, but I don't think boundaries keep you single. Actually, it allows the man to see you as a respectable woman. And that's what my first fiance told me. He was a gospel singer. And he was like, one of the things I noticed about you, Andre, is that you really um, make it know what your boundaries are. And he liked that, you know, and that's the reason why he wanted to marry me. So I think if your boundaries are, like you said, you set them up front. Um, and if it's not, too strict or not too extreme where it's like okay i can't even shake your hand then <laughs> then it's not going to keep you single but if you're like that where it's like oh i don't even want to touch the man he can't touch me he wow. can't stare at me um then that makes you, that would make you um single and i have met um different single people who said that to me they were like i don't even want him to hug me and i was like okay um a church hug that should be fine. But I like what you said, doctors, that some of like like with the kissing, like if it gets too extreme, the, the really, really, really tight hugs, then no, we're not in a relationship. I don't know you like that. Back up. <laughs> Back up. But just to give a church hug or even a handshake, I think that's OK. But it can make you single if you seem very unapproachable, you know, um, and in my life. As long as I've kept up, okay, I don't want it to go too far where it leads me into sin, then that actually doesn't make me single. That makes me a, a candidate for marriage. Because the men that I've met, at least in the church, that's what they're looking for, is a woman who respects herself and respects that man, especially if he's in a um, leadership position in church. I think I'm, uh, I, I love what y'all are saying so far. Uh, I, I'm going to look at it from a slightly different angle. Um, when I was single, before I committed to abstinence back in 2017, um, I had no space boundaries, like none whatsoever. Um, I was going about it the entire, the wrong way. Um, I was out here just, you know, sleeping around and, and I had no boundaries whatsoever. And what that did was it caused for me to make the wrong relationship choices. Um, so for me, it was it was slightly different. I had no boundaries and none of the women that were in my life felt like I chose them. I was just really using them as a coping mechanism. Um, so for myself, um, I saw the opposite effect when I didn't have any boundaries. But then um, as I committed my life to Christ, rededicated my life back to Christ again, and then I began to abstain from sex for marriage um, back in March of 2017, um, it allowed for me to have a lot more clarity, um, not kissing, not holding hands, not doing any of that, because I wanted to have the clarity to see, all right, is this person, is this woman the, the one that God has for me? And so 
when I met my uh, now fiance, um, it was very interesting when we first met, I mentioned I was abstinent. She was also abstinent as well. Um, we're still walking that journey of abstinence together. Um, we were able to then progress our relationship and be able to really get to know one another for who we are, not for what we can do for one another. So um, in terms of the, the question, um, we do have boundaries, space boundaries that, that, that is, but um, the space boundaries, I've seen where when I didn't have them, the repercussions that were there, but then now that I that we have them in place, and now that we're both on that same journey together, I see how effective it is um, now that we have those, those things in place. Yeah, definitely. I mean, boundaries are kind of like guidelines, you know, for a relationship where you really get to know that person. And um, I'm engaged again. This is my third engagement. And my fiance this time he was just telling me he was like well under you are the first woman who was taking the time to actually know me and what i like versus okay what can you do in that bedroom and i'm like yeah we're not doing that bro but so you're you're right and it, it's so good to hear from a male's perspective that boundaries are necessary they really are they really are Really are now get into why I'm on my third engagement. And yeah, you guys make some really great points. And of course, I'm coming back as a protagonist in just a moment, but I definitely want to hear from uh, Andre. Yeah, first of all, I like what was said uh, from both the ladies and from Joseph. Uh, I think it was a great uh, lead off to uh, indicate what it means to have boundaries and why you must have them. Uh, now, I myself, uh, to give a little bit of a background uh, regarding me, uh, again, for me, um, I didn't start out having boundaries uh, myself as well because um, that wasn't an issue for me to, uh, to you know, lead with the idea that boundaries must be set or had in a relationship when it comes to uh, intimacy. Now, I did have boundaries in other areas. Uh, I had boundaries when it came to what I would uh, what I would accept, you know, how it was treated, um, you know, how how someone would approach a particular situation, how to handle conflict, arguments, things like that. I think that was more my focus. Um, I kind of let the other things kind of sift themselves out as I uh, approach relationships in a in a more intimate way. Uh, now, obviously, I've grown over that time, and the uh, the, the biblical way to go about doing it is God, God does want you to have boundaries because he respects us. And in that regard, he also expects us to respect ourselves. So in having a boundary, um, it, it just only denotes the fact that you have self-respect. Um, now, as far as uh, if those are those boundaries keeping me single, I, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think those are things that are keeping me single in that, re in that respect. Awesome. Awesome. I think uh, what everybody said was really good. I think what everybody said makes a lot of sense when it comes to boundaries. Uh, but I'm a little different. And like I said, I'm going to come uh, from an antagonist point of view. And uh, some of this is my perspective. Some of this is not. But this is just to make you think a little bit more uh, about uh, your boundaries. And so um, and I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot, but I know that Joseph is in a relationship. Is anybody else on the panel single or in a relationship? Who's in a relationship on the panel? Okay, so I think it's a little different. I know uh, since we have two people that's in a relationship on the panel and we have two single people, uh, I think the perspectives would be just a tad bit different because I know before you decided to make a commitment, uh, was were the boundaries more strict before making the, the commitment or as you begin to date? Uh, and I'm asking uh, Joseph and Andrea uh, this question. Were the boundaries more strict as you were getting to know these individuals or after we're talking about space boundaries as far as the uh, hugging, uh, kissing, uh, intimate contact, sitting next to each other. So 
Was it something that had to be developed where it was more later when you got into a committed relationship or was it really, really strict in the beginning, in the early stages? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you no, you go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead, it's okay. I was gonna say in the beginning it was, and actually I was gonna break up with the guy if he kept helping me a certain way. I was, and I told him, I said, keep hugging me like that. And I said it to that such, and that told too. I was like, I'm gonna be out of here. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I did, and um, you know, but over time, you talk to each other and you see which boundaries um, one another feel comfortable about. And I, I think the biggest thing for me was explaining to him why I need those boundaries. Um, because at first he, he didn't understand, you know, like like a lot of the guys are saying they came from relationships where there were no boundaries, you know, whether you're in church or not. <clears throat> and so for him, meaning me, it was like, what? You got boundaries? What, what is this? So it was good for me to say what those boundaries were and why. That's good. I have to agree with that, Andre, on that. Um, for myself, coming from being as promiscuous as I was prior to 2017, once I began to uh, commit my life back to Christ again, uh, it was, um, you know, I, ha I knew that there were certain things that triggered me to uh, be tempted to go back into that type of lifestyle. So for myself, I couldn't kiss, I couldn't hug, I couldn't do any types of physical contact. So my space boundaries were really, <laughs> really high. You know, I couldn't do anything. But then when I met my now fiance, um, her love language is physical touch. So that was a where it was like, well, how is this going to work? So my primary love language is quality time. Hers is physical touch. And she's like, we can't even hold hands. We can't even hug. I'm like, listen, I'm coming from a wild lifestyle. You're going to have to sit down. We, we, and we really had to have that conversation. So somebody in the chat in the comments wrote about communication. That's when we had to have that candid conversation where it was an explanation as to why I had so much, I had really high boundaries to where I was almost keeping her out to where she had to have a level of understanding saying, okay, if I hug him like this or if he, he hugs me like this, his mind is going somewhere else. Because a lot of times we think, you know, when we have boundaries, it's a physical thing. It's also mental boundaries that we have as well. Um, so it's important for us to have those conversations and be able to really listen to the person because a lot of times we're thinking that somebody has unrealistic boundaries. It's really, uh, you have to get the backstory behind that in order to understand really where they're coming from. Absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, the points that you guys are making coming from your perspectives, I think makes a, a lot of sense. Um, did any of the, uh, uh, Andre or Dr. Lee, did you want to add to what Joseph and uh, Andre were saying? Okay. All right. And so I, I certainly do understand and I think it is important. And I think it comes down to uh, knowing you, uh, knowing yourself individually, knowing uh, your love languages, because it was a good point that you made, uh, both of you, Andrea and Joseph, uh, about uh, knowing uh, love languages, because mine is the same. Mine, my uh, top two love languages are physical touch and quality time. So I don't feel a love that this uh, uh, woman is, is touching me in some kind of way or holding me and, and hugs and things of that nature. As far as I, I feel more loved in that way when she's touched me, I feel like a person, a woman is really interested in me when she's so affection because I'm highly affectionate as well. So I couldn't deal. Now, let's, I couldn't deal with a woman who was pushing, hey, don't touch me. Hey, yeah. I mean, look, I just... I, I'm, I'm not. The, that's the kind of woman I will not date. I will not date a woman who's not affectionate because I'm affectionate. That would be really uncomfortable for me because I'm a person who hugs and I love sitting next to uh, my woman. And those are the kind of women that I'm used to. They show me a lot of affection, and and I've I haven't incorporated uh, really strict uh, space boundaries. That's I haven't. Now it comes when it all comes down to it. It comes to what the two individuals are comfortable with. And you guys had that conversation. I love what Andrew was saying about they had to have that conversation. I know probably was uncomfortable because if Andrew, when you said you were saying, hey, you know, don't touch me like this. Oh, no, this, this ain't going to work. Now, nah, this, <laughs> this ain't going to work for me. But you had the conversation. 
and he understood and then it grew as, as well as Joseph. And so I think that's important uh, because everybody is different. Everybody's level of, I would say, discipline too in their flesh is different too. And so uh, uh, maybe a hug may, uh, may be very innocent for somebody else, but then maybe a hug may arouse somebody where they, you know, are aroused and ready to, you know, to be intimate uh, in a more physical, uh, sexual way. And so that makes a lot of sense. And so this is going to lead into uh, the next question. And like I said, anytime you guys can jump in there on how you feel, uh, but it still can, uh, this question is incorporated into the first question, which is, and I'll use this as an example once I read the question, but do you have time boundaries uh, such as no telephone calls uh, or dates after 10 p.m., that kind of thing? Uh, you don't want anybody contacting you after a certain amount of time or um, is it has it been effective for you? Like, do you have a, a curfew? Like, look, don't call me after 10 o'clock p.m. and all that kind of stuff. And so go ahead. Anybody can jump in there and answer that question. Yeah, I don't have a problem tackling that one at all, or, or any of the questions, really. Um, but I, I myself, uh, I'm an early riser, and uh, I'm not always the uh, earliest to bed, but um, these days I definitely try to be. Um, but because I have such a busy schedule and a lot of things intermingled in, um, I definitely try to put some, uh, not restraints on, you know, talking on the phone, because I'll be honest with you, I'm not the long winded guy when it comes to a phone conversation, but I do like a good quality conversation as opposed to a lengthy, you know, conversation talking about sweet nothings or whatever. I mean, those, those are fine on some occasions, but you know, that's, that's not me typically. So um, I can take, you know, I've done it in the past, obviously I've, I've had phone conversations that were lengthy, um, but I do like a short you know, on a typical, a short conversation, uh, especially at night. I don't, I don't typically have a, you know, you can't call me past 10. However, if I'm in bed, you just miss me. <laughs> uh, that's just how I go with that. So. Yeah, I, I agree with Andre on that too. Um, I don't have any time boundaries. I don't. Um, being in the singles ministry, I get all types of calls and um, text messages, just different women and men asking various questions. And I also work in ministry at my church. And so, I don't know. I mean, I have family members calling me at different times tonight. And if, if being in a relationship, I... Yeah, I don't have a time boundary, but I can see where it's beneficial to have a time boundary on the phone. But just kind of like Andre, I mean, when I fall asleep, I fall asleep and you won't be able to get me there. I ain't waiting up for your phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So for me, mm -hmm. I um, I don't, uh, a bit similar to what I've just uh, heard said, um, I don't have a lot of time boundaries, but I do put a few things in place to assist me with self-care and um, just to make sure that I keep balance in my life. And so one of those things is, for instance, if we're talking about having conversations over the phone, if it's in the evening, after a certain time, if I know I'm ready to go to sleep, then I put my phone on mute or silent or whatever. Um, so that way, if someone calls me or texts or whatever, I won't know it if I'm going to sleep. And I make sure the most important thing I do when I'm getting to know a man as far as, because I'm single right now, but if I'm getting to know a man or even when I'm already in a relationship is the communication piece of it. So I don't want them to think I'm just, you know, never answering. And on the other end of it, on the flip side of it, I don't know their processes of what they do. So I like to have a conversation about it. A lot of things I think is very important to have conversations for clarity, understanding. And so everyone knows what everyone likes to do, what they don't like. So I have a conversation it's not the first time, the come, you know, when we first talking, maybe a week or two and we're really like starting to feel that we're, you know, 
obviously, hopefully we started, you know, <laughs> interested in each other because sometimes you can, I personally think I can tell after one or two conversations if it's going past that my personal opinion. And so anyway, so I have a conversation with them and say, Hey, I don't have a specific time I go to sleep. So there's no specific time, but I do try when I know I have to go to work the next morning, I do try to go to sleep around 10, 10, 30, 11. So, if, excuse me. So if you call me at 1 a.m., most likely you will not get me. That's what I have the conversation with them. And I, that's what I say. And I say also that I usually turn my phone on mute because when I go to sleep, I don't want to get interrupted or disturbed. That's my time to get some rest. So I made that very clear that if you miss me, you know, if you say I'm going to call you back and it's 1230, most likely I'm already asleep. So that's I have like mm, a few time boundaries, but not across the board where you can never call. Don't call me after eight o'clock or don't call before 7 a.m. I don't have those kind of time boundaries uh, because a person can call a text whenever they want to. They may not get me <laughs> if I'm not available. And likewise, I like to hear uh, when I'm getting to know a man, I want to know what his like expectations of communication are or what, you know, what kind of things, you know, maybe he goes to sleep by 10 p.m. And so I won't be calling. And I think it's also a respect thing for me. So I won't be calling. If he's told me that he goes to sleep around 10 p.m. And I didn't get free until maybe 1045. I won't call. I'll just wait until the next morning and just speak then. So I think the most important thing is just to have the communication piece where you get an understanding and there's clarity on, across the board on what he likes, what I like. And um, one of the other key things that just happened actually last um, Sunday <laughs> uh, was I went on a first and last uh, meeting with <laughs> with someone and <laughs> and we um, we were going to see uh, just a, we went to like a park where they were doing fireworks and all this and. He mentioned before we got there, I'm glad he did, that he wanted to go to the movies afterwards. And so that's a no for me. And I'll mention why. Um, because, first of all, the fireworks were not starting until 9.30. So I'm like, what time are you trying to go to the movies? I said, I don't think that's going to work tonight. Because, I mean, because I'm like, it's for several reasons. One, I just met you. I'm not going to the movies with you uh, at 12.30, 1 o'clock. That's not me. He's gone. Uh, also, another reason is that's time for me to go to sleep. <laughs> and most things are closed by that time. And I need to say closed as well, since we're talking transparent. So <laughs> we're not going to the movies at 1230. We're not doing it. And so, <laughs> so anyway, and then third, I'm like, that's not a good place to get to know each other. We're sitting in the dark, watching a movie. We're just meeting for the first time. No. And so where we met at was, a, I think, was a good place because we met in the daylight, for one. I prefer, so I don't have, as I mentioned, I don't have a lot of time boundaries, but I do prefer to meet a person, a man, in the daylight when I first meet him. <laughs> we don't always have to be in the daylight, but sometimes we need to meet in the daylight. And so, uh, so that's something that I missed him, you know, ahead of time. And so we met in the daytime. It was just like 7, 7.30, I think. And we got a chance to actually talk, get to know each other <laughs> a little bit. And before we left, though, that's when he, when he texted me, he said, oh, I'm thinking maybe we go to the movies afterwards. And I'm, so I'm glad he mentioned it ahead of time because even if he had not mentioned it, I would have said it while we was at the fireworks show because – that's the boundary I have is going out too late with a man, especially if I'm just meeting you. That's a no for me. That's a that's a total no. It's not trying to be mean or anything. It's just part of my boundaries. And it's also a respect thing, too. Why are you wanting me to go to the movies with you at 1230? 
we don't know each other. So those are a few things that <laughs> that I have, and I, I am very adamant about some of my boundaries. And so we did. Let me just say, the, even though that was the only person last time we met, I did. I am open to going to the movie. So on that on Sunday when he mentioned it, I did give him an alternative. I said, "Oh, well, what about on your off day? We go, you know, in the evening, not that late, maybe." five, seven, you know. Um, and then he said, okay, that'll work. But a few days later, this is why I have, this is why it's good for me to have these time boundaries. He started trying to change up things. He's going to be off on Thursday and Friday, and now he wants to change it up. And I said, oh, well, I don't go after seven. I'm not going to movies after seven. And so that's why I said I do sometimes have boundaries with time, but it just depends. Cause we're not about to go to the movies at 12 30 and then i get sleepy quick like at that time i don't want to be at the movies in the dark and i don't want nobody touching me at that time because <laughs> if we just knew i'm talking about being new you just get to know me why are you touching me so anyway that's all i have <laughs> i gotta say i agree with, you, uh, with uh, the fact that you know when i was single i didn't have really much time boundaries and I wasn't really good at that time really communicating it. It would just so happen after 10 p.m. you just wouldn't reach me, I would be asleep. Um, but now uh, being in the relationship with my fiance, um, when we first got together, she's an early riser like Andre mentioned. Um, she likes to get up early and work out in the morning. So I'm usually contacting her around the same time that I had my undisclosed cutoff time for people when I was single. So it just happened to work that way. Um, but whenever she, you know, if an emergency arises or anything like that, I really don't have a boundary when it comes to that. But usually, we usually keep that that uh, guideline in, in place in the in the evening. But then in the morning, we've also communicated that this is our alone time to spend with God first. Um, and she has to realize and recognize that she's she comes second in my life to Him, and vice versa. In her life, I come second, and we're okay with that. Um, and then we also open up our days with prayer as well. So. As far as the time boundary thing, um, we do have it um, and in this relationship, and this is the first relationship that I've ever been in where I'm, uh, she's a really big communicator and so am I. I've become a big communicator because she is. <laughs> so uh, for me, uh, I had to uh, communicate these time boundaries and she also communicated them as well. So she actually helped me in that area. I like what uh, Dr. Elena had to say regarding the respect of the boundaries. Um, that's very important. Um, uh, as men someone mentioned in the chat, I think uh, communication of your boundaries is very, uh, very key, very essential. Um, I mean, it, it, it's kind of over time, you're going to learn those things. But if you just note it up front, what you what you prefer, and what you what you what you would like to see, but then also, you know, I mean, sometimes you got to pound it. I mean, unfortunately, you know, pound that information into uh, reality for some people. Because some people are, you know, going to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, some people have a nature of doing certain things later. Or, and then they just think that automatically, you know, you might be free or whatever. If you love them enough to talk to them, then you can answer the phone at 3 a.m. But but establishing what you what you need up front and what you're willing to take and accept, that's very key. I agree with all you guys, and I agree with all you guys from a certain extent. But here I come. Here I come. Let's Listen, uh, uh, Dr. Alina and RJ, take those phones off of mute. Just take those phones off of mute. You don't know if it's going to be an emergency or what's going to take place. But, but listen, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you guys. Uh, but let me tell you how I am, because it also depends on the work schedule as well, because I work all day. I work 10 hours a day. So my whole day is gone. So if you're trying to get a hold of me during the daytime, you're probably not going to be able to, to get a hold of me. And so to me, I, I, that's why communication is so important. I'm just a natural night owl. I'm up all kinds of night, up to two and three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, because that's just me, though. You know, that's just me. I'm definitely not a morning person. So if you're trying to contact me before 11 a.m., you may not hear anything. I'm, I'm, you know, probably asleep. And sometimes on the weekends, I'm up all night till 6 a.m. in the morning to 7, and I'll sleep all day until about 3 p.m. And I'll give you an example because I was uh, 
you know, talking to someone, getting to know someone. And man, that schedule. So I think it's very important that you communicate your schedules because, you know, some people like to do things like earlier in the day, like you were saying, Dr. Lena, you want to be, you want to see the person. And I, and I understand it. I respect uh, wanting to uh, meet the person for the first time or meet them for the first few times in the daytime. You're not doing anything at night. That's to protect yourself. It's respect. I certainly do understand that. And I respect that. And so uh, certain times, like I said, it, you're just not going to get me because on the weekends, if I'm not working, I ain't doing nothing. I ain't doing nothing. I'm being lazy unless we got something planned. So if we if we got something planned, because that's how I am, I'll plan some things and then I'll just be spontaneous. Like, hey, look, you want to go? Hey, how you doing? What you doing? Let's go here. Let's, you know, let's take a trip. That's just me. And so some uh, women are really like strict planners. You know, they, everything's got to be planned. Oh, we, we got to meet here at two. And, and then at, at six o'clock, we're, we're going to the movies. And, and at nine o'clock, I got this dinner plan. And yeah, that's wonderful. I think that's great. But I mean, the plan, I don't plan things like that all the time. So you're going to have to let me know ahead of time. And if I'm planning something, I'll definitely let you know ahead of time. Now, and, and I like to, to, to be spontaneous and surprise you. Like, hey, you know what? Hey. Just put on, you know, get, you know, put on this type of outfit. We go in here, put on this type of outfit, because look, just go. But if you're a person that likes to, to plan, and oh no, I can't. And so it depends on communication styles and, and your schedule. Because look, hey, you can call me at one o'clock a.m. Because I'm up. I'm wide awake. I'm wide awake at one o'clock a.m. So call me. But I understand the, the boundaries that you guys have. You know, as far as you got to work, you have time boundaries. So I respect that. But it's not going to work. Like I said, and ladies, it's not going to work for me if you have to have everything planned to the T all the time because I'm very spontaneous. And believe me, I do love a, a, a woman who plans. I plan things. Uh, but if we can plan everything, then, oh, you know, I, I may not be the guy for you. All right. But um, I understand where you guys come from. Anybody can jump in there. I mean, if you want to say something, you can. Yeah, uh, I was going to say that. Oh, go ahead. Oh, that's okay. Uh, that's okay. Oh, I was just going to say that uh, for me, like if it's a weekend or if I'm off and like for the summer I'm off, there are times when, I, when I'm actually trying to get better um, because pretty soon school will start back. But there are times that over the summer or if it's the weekend that I might stay up to one or two a few times three, you know, <laughs> if I'm like having a conversation with someone or just in the living room, flipping through, looking at a movie or something. So if it's a day where I know I'm off the next day or whatever, or the evening I'm off the next day, then I'm okay with flexing my time. But sleep and rest is important. And I work with students. And so, um, you know, I mean, any, whatever type of occupation you have, <laughs> But I I don't only work with students. I work with parents too. So <laughs> so sleep is important for me. So I mean I just have to get my rest. But if it's when I'm off, like if I know I'm off on Saturday or Sunday or like over the summer, I can be a more flexible with my schedule. And and likewise, I I dated someone that had to be up at five o'clock, five a.m. He needs to go sleep by 9 or 10 p.m. And I had to be mindful of that and just, you know, respect that he has to get his rest. It's like I need to get my rest. Yeah. I was just going to say, you know, I think, and I've seen Shireen's comment. Hopefully I'm saying her name right. Compromising is good in a relationship. And that is okay to a certain point. Kind of like if you have a man like Tamil where he's, um, he likes to do things on the rim, then yes, you do need to compromise a little bit, but that comes with trust. Kind of like what Andre was saying, you got to be able to trust that person. And on that date that Dr. Walker talked about, obviously she was getting, I know us say people, we don't like to say vibes, but um, you can feel the, the, the spirit, let's say that, discern the spirit that something may be off with this person and they're not really a trustworthy individual i'm kind of getting uh picking up in the spirit that you know they may try to do something to me sexually so then yeah you're not going to compromise on your boundary but if you feel that safe place with them like okay they have a good character and that does come with time 
or that could just come with your spirit. You know, the Lord could just speak to you and let you know, like, it's okay. It, it's okay to talk to this person a little later or maybe hang out a little later because they're a trustworthy person. And not where your good would be evilly spoken of, nothing like that. Mm. But um, because I don't believe God will lead you into anything that would make you look bad or something like that. But if you're in a relationship, you will find that balance of, okay, it's okay to spend that extra time. This sacrifice on my sleep or this sacrifice on a hobby that I wanted to do, it's worth it with this individual. It really is. Like this individual is worth me making that sacrifice. So, but that comes with knowing the, the individual and having that comfortability and feeling that safeness with them. And knowing that they're not going to take your compromise and make you compromise and cause you to see, you know. I agree. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes effort, for me, if I notice, like effort is very important. Like if I notice mm -hmm. that um, the man is putting in effort just like I am, for instance, my love language is quality time. Whether that's actually my top love language is quality time. My second is active service. And so if he knows that quality time is important and that's my top love language, if we're talking, not texting, I don't like to text a lot. I make it very clear. I don't want a text buddy. I don't need text buddies. And so, I mean, I'm okay with texting, but we got to talk sometimes. And if he knows that that's important to me and he makes an effort, then that helps me be willing to sacrifice more. For, honestly, for me, and whether that's time talking, video chat, or in person, um, all of it's important. All of it's quality time because when you're actually, especially, I actually prefer video chat sometimes versus just talking because you have to actually make yourself available, discipline yourself to sit down and talk. You know, <laughs> if you're on video chat versus you just text it while you're in a grocery store or wherever. So I actually prefer video chat pretty often. And I usually bring it up early on when I'm getting to know a man. That, hey, are you able to video chat? Because it's important for me actually to even know if he has time to video chat. Because everyone single don't have time. You know, so if you don't have time to get to know me, well, we I'm not about to be wasting my time and you don't need to be wasting yours either. So, you know, so I'm just saying, because sometimes people, you know, just, I mean, I have a lot going on, but I'm single. And if I say I'm single and actively want to, you know, be in a relationship, then I'm going to make the time. Some people do not make time. And that's a, that's a good indicator for me if a man is going to make time for me by sitting down, being able to video chat with me. So for me, that shows me his effort. And if he's uh, showing effort, then that that helps me to be able to compromise more with him. Hey, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, uh, Alina. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. In fact, I always say, um, well, this is the standard that I hold to myself, but with anybody else, I, I say personally that texting is not the dish. It's just the, the seasoning. I mean, to me, in my opinion, it's not the whole entire dish. It's uh, it's just something to kind of get it going. If you if like if you have a sporadic random thought throughout the day, that's I guess that's cool. But I don't live. I don't I don't do the long ten page texts. Mm -hmm. I don't even read those texts. I just look at them and do whatever <laughs> to them. I, I, I don't have that time. You know, I don't have the time to read long texts. I've I've gotten those texts, and uh, I think she got mad the uh, one another. Young lady that I was dealing with in the past, she uh, she got mad when I didn't respond to her text. I said, "Well, I just picked up a phone and called her. That's that's my nature is to have a conversation, an active, engaging conversation." So I agree with your uh, idea about texting. Well, Andre, if you call her and she's at work, she's texting you and you're going to go while she's at work. I'm just no, go ahead, man. I'm just saying, I know what she said, man. She <laughs> might be at work, but then you call her, she texts you because she want to talk to you. She's at work, but then you, you call her and she's, you can't call her at work, my man. <laughs> well, if I'm in a relationship with her, 
I'm just messing with you. Dad. And if she said ten pounds, she must not be at work. <laughs> hey, it's right. It's right. Time, time, you, you learn. Hey, you learn stuff like that, you learn, and it's cool. I mean, you know, because if I call you not available, it's all good because you're likely gonna call me. I'm not gonna be available either. You know, I mean, it's not, it's not a, you know, tip or tat or anything. It's just that's how you learn people, and people operate differently uh, on different schedules. And then you also have, uh, I, mean, I know some people are into long distance dating and that sort of thing. I mean, then you got to worry about the the time zone change and that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. you have that to consider as well. So, hey, you're right on that. I was dating or getting to know a man who was in Hawaii. Believe it or not. Okay. <laughs> We had a five-hour time difference. That's almost another country. <laughs> almost. A five-hour time difference. That was my first time ever <laughs> experiencing that. But yeah. I, I'm a pro I am for texting because, like Jamil said, um, you're at work, you know, and you cannot answer the phone. And I've had some men get really upset with me because I wouldn't answer the phone. I'm like, hey work or I'm driving let me just shoot you a text and you know when I get a moment I'll give you a call back and um, yeah sometimes that happens sometimes not but yeah I, I'm I'm for texting I am I'm for texting but once you get in a relationship with the person then yeah definitely do the old school method of talk to them on the phone but right now when you're working you have so much going on I know I do have a lot going on I'm like texting sometimes it's like the best communication for me. And I feel all of you and I, I would just like to say, I'll just mess with you a little bit, Andre. I'm more of a, uh, you know, face to face kind of guy. So I like, um, you know, uh, meeting in person. I love face to face interaction. And, um, you know, I, I talk on the phone as well because I know that's uh, the major way of getting to know someone in the beginning is, is having these uh, phone conversations, which I think is, is, is cool. And uh, sometimes they're long, sometimes not, but um, it, it's really necessary. And so um, I'm not so much big on video chatting, which is cool. Uh, if I'm first meeting the person, especially with doing a lot of online dating and things of that nature, mm -hmm. things of that nature, I think it's good to uh, video chat with them and see them, uh, their face, and to kind of see if this is a real person. Because you got people out mm -hmm. here, you can be anybody, you can be anybody online, you can be anybody on social media. So you want to know that you're talking to a real person. Uh, on the other end as well. So that confirms that. Uh, but uh, ladies, look, if you want to go to the movies at 12 midnight, uh, let's go. Uh, they got some movie theaters that's open at 12. I'll be wide awake. We can wide go. Enjoy. <laughs> enjoy. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a night owl. And so I'm just making that distinction. But what you, to be honest, and I, you know, of course, I'm kind of kidding and, and being serious at the same time. But I understand and respect everybody's boundaries. And what you guys said makes a lot of sense. It's, it's real. It's real. And like I said, I like to have real conversations and real talk. And so I'm going to get into you guys' business a little bit. We're going to get into you guys' business. Oh, Just man. Can I ask something real quick? Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, it was a question that I I didn't I didn't see the, uh, the name all the way. But he was asking a question about how do you close the deal if everyone has preferences? Okay, yeah. And if you don't mind, I want to add yeah, something yeah, to that. Sure. Okay. Okay. okay, so it says when everything, oh. Uh, back up. Go ahead. Okay, so when everything that goes against our preferences is turned into a deal breaker, how will we ever close the deal? Okay, so for me, I would say my opinions on that is that um, that's why, I mean, with the communication, everyone's talking about their preferences and at that point, you at some point you should start figuring out if there's something kind of like what Andrea was saying about where you uh, compromise and you determine if you're going to make sacrifices. Because I mean, if it depending on what the preference is, there are some things that you may be willing to negotiate, you know, and compromise on. So that's what I would say as far as um, closing a deal is more on focusing on communication. With you're willing to compromise on, negotiate, and then determine if it's if it's best if you're compatible. And then there are some situations that just don't work. So for me, honestly, um, there are times when I feel I know um, 
some like men that are working in truck driving, they get a, a bad rep. But honestly, sometimes I feel that that's like, you know, the I don't know. <laughs> that would be a good situation for me in ways because I don't like no. I, don't, I like my space. I'm gonna just be transparent. <laughs> we talking about boundaries. <laughs> I like initially to have my space, and if he's on the road a lot, then he will not be in my space. <laughs> I'm just being transparent. <laughs> but that's initially. But eventually, this is what I would eventually want him to be home. And that's where the conflict will come. And I know that ahead of time, so why even go there? Because actually, I've been married before, divorced now, and my ex-husband was a truck driver since I'm being transparent on this. <laughs> but eventually, I'm going to want him to come home <laughs> and be home and travel because I like to travel. And so um, initially, it was a good deal. It was sweet. It was a sweet deal. It was nice. He wasn't in my way. <laughs> and so, but eventually, I'm, you know, there's going to be times where I'm like, okay, I need you home. And I want you home. But if that conflicts with your work schedule, then that's an issue. And so I think that's why it's important to also re realize, what did somebody say? Oh, realize uh, what even professions, there are some professions that you may not be able to deal with. For instance, there was someone recently that wanted to, uh, that sent me a message, he's a police officer. I've dated a police officer years ago and that did not work. So I think that's important to also consider, you know, professions. I mean, not saying that there are certain professions that it may be harder to have that time and for me quality time is my love language so for some professions it's going to be tough but it can all with like i said with compromising negotiating and different things it could still work but sometimes with certain professions you may just don't want to even try to make it work you know <laughs> so it just depends i think that's a good point and i was thinking about um, the fact that, you know, we're talking about communicating uh, boundaries, that conversation cannot be a one time set it and forget it type of situation. These conversations have to continually be spoken of because you could be dating somebody that is in education like yourself. And then they decide to be a truck driver after you get married. Then what? <laughs> then you'll have to be able to decide, you know, as far as how you're going to be able to accommodate that, because like yourself, my love language is quality time. That's going to be tough. Um, but now that you're in marriage, how do you work through that? Like, how would you be able to have that level of compromise? So I, I, I think uh, I'm loving the points that's made. Um, but we also just have to just remind everybody else that, hey, these conversations have to be continued because just because it's a boundary now, just like what I was sharing earlier with my fiance and I, I couldn't hug, kiss or do any of this. And she's like, yo, this is my love language. Like, this is not going to work. But once we were able to work through it and understand my why, now she's able to, to, to compromise and say, hey, this is, okay, we can't kiss this way. We can't hug like this because now, it's, you know, it's tempting for me. But now as I'm even growing, now those boundaries aren't the same anymore. So it's, it's an evolution piece, I think, as well that, that we should uh, keep in mind. And having a person who can understand that as well as make the adjustment is so key. It really is. Or, or even you as a person making that adjustment. Because, um, Joseph, I was a person, quality time, and I like, I like physical touch as well. I do. Um, but I have to have boundaries with that. And where's the guy? That is his love language, is physical touch. And so it was... And even now, it's still an ongoing conversation. It doesn't stop. But when they love you and um, they value you, they'll make the adjustments. And you will make the adjustments, too, for them. Because you'll see them worthy of that um, that sacrifice of yourself, you know? Sure. It is. It's, it's, but knowing yourself, I think, is very key. <laughs> Because, like she said, if you date different professions, and I have, I've dated a cop too, and he was in the military. And the weirdest part is he had more time than I did. I was working at a doctor's office, and I was um, studying to be an attorney. 
Nevertheless, he had a little bit more time. I don't know how that how that worked, but he would get mad at me because we never went on an actual date. Like we never went out to eat, and so that didn't last long. It didn't. It didn't. Last long. But he didn't feed you so, tacos. But knowing uh, yourself and knowing like if you can <laughs> make that time. Yeah, you can make that time, or you want to make that time for the person, but you got to know yourself, and that, and you got to know that person too. Mm -hmm. You didn't get any tacos on that transaction, huh, Andrea? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear, I hear, I hear. Ladies like tacos. So. <laughs> yes, we do. We do love tacos. <laughs> Yeah, I heard that too, Andre. Too. Yeah, they they love most ladies who love tacos unless they are uh, vegan. Uh, but they have vegan tacos now with vegan meat too. So tofu. tofu. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. But you guys, you guys make some wonderful points. Make some very beautiful points. I I respect um, everything that I've heard, and uh, even in answering that question that AB had up there. Uh, and I like what everybody said. And then uh, being able to adjust in that constant communication, as uh, Joseph was saying, is very, very important uh, because uh, as we do get into these relationships, we have to understand that it can't be all about us all the time. We're going to have to compromise some things, you know. Uh, and so it, it just it just can't be all about what we want to do all the time. And so you're going to in order to have a successful relationship, you're going to have to be unselfish in that way. And so I really believe that's that's key and important. So um, I think, you know, everything that I've heard, the mentalities uh, that you guys have concerning uh, this whole uh, boundaries thing is, is really good. And you, you're getting a lot of people in the comments that are, you know, understanding and really feeling what you guys are saying. And so when you look back at the replay, check out the comments. Uh, you got a lot of people who's really agreeing and feeling uh, what you guys are saying. And so as I was saying earlier, and um, uh, we got probably about 30 more minutes to go, but I really want to dive into this and I'm going to ask these two questions in at the same time uh, before uh, our time. But like I said, I'm going to get into your business a little bit. I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready. And I want, I hope, I want you to be honest, honest and candid. I love it. I love it. I want you to be honest and candid about these questions. And so it's going to be a little controversial when you hear from me, but you we go. And so uh, let me get to that question and check and make sure that I'm going to ask these questions correctly and anybody can jump in at any time. And so we have individuals on the panel who are single and we have individuals on the panel uh, who are in relationships. And so it's probably going to be different, the answers and perspectives from this uh, these questions. But the question is, how do you feel? about potential couples going to visit and spend time with each other at their homes. And I'm talking about Netflix and chill type situations, all right? And the last question incorporated into that, because it's all gonna encompass everything is, also, how do you feel about potential couples taking trips and staying overnight at the same hotel and in the same hotel room. All right. Now, look, I want you guys to be honest again. Now, this, this, these questions have come up in a group a couple of times. I think we even talked about it one time in the discussion, uh, Dr. Alina. And so I, I can't wait to hear from you guys. Anybody can, can jump in there and answer uh, this question or these questions. I'll, I'll take a stab first. Um, to the first part of the question, Netflix is chilling. Um, it used to be something I was afraid of. So like going back to what I was saying before, um, I just to add a little context to that, when I first became absent, maybe about three months out or in my abstinence journey, it's all new. I'm still trying to learn the, the rules or the guidelines for it. Um, and I went on a date with a young lady and afterwards we came back to my place and um, she kissed me. And just the kiss, it triggered something in me and I became afraid. I was like, oh no, I'm not, I don't want to go back to that Joe that, was prior to March 2017, but I felt a tick. So ever since then, I was afraid of it. So it wasn't the fact that I couldn't handle it. I was fearful that I couldn't handle it. And so when I met my fiance, you know, when we were just meeting each other, I was like, listen, we got to hang outside. So we burned a lot of gas sitting out in the car, you know, in the car with the air conditioning on uh, because it's hot outside or when it gets cold outside, we're burning a lot of uh, gas in the car. 
Um, but I had to really examine the fact that the boundary that I set uh, at that point, almost two years prior to that, was it still a valid boundary right then and there? And I had to be honest with myself and be real with myself. And the answer was no. So as we got deeper into our relationship over time, we continued those conversations of boundaries because she asked, she's like, hey, you know, do you feel like this is a, a appropriate boundary that we still have from when we first met? You know, we did a lot of hanging out in restaurants and different places, our favorite places that we like to go. But um, as far as watching a movie, like we go to the movies and then, you know, as far as having movies over at the house, you know, is this a, is this a boundary that we, we have to keep in place? And so to this day, um, absolutely. She comes over um, and I go over to her place. We watch movies. But now it's not uh, based in fear. That was really why I created that boundary. So examining your why behind the boundary that you have will determine is this a, is this a boundary that you have to keep in place? Well, why do you have it keep kept in place? The Lord actually dealt with me on that. He's like, yo, you're not the same person you were in 2016 as you are here in 2018 and in 2019. So I had to really, um, you know, we talked about earlier about examining and knowing yourself, knowing knowing your why, understanding your why is so important. Like, why do I have the boundaries that I have, and are they realistic now? Mm. Yeah, that's so good, just what you say, like that fear part. And um, I think once you get into a relationship and knowing the person, they know you, I think it is okay to hang one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, because sometimes you can't have those real conversations in the group. Now, where I come from, the old school church I come from, and, and, and I do agree with them. I'm not trying to kick it friends, but I've been taught because they taught that if you, um, basically they say courting. If you court, you had to have a chaperone. You know, you had a chaperone all the way up until you got married. And when I was younger, I was like, that's crazy. Like, that's crazy. Like, if Jesus don't keep you, nobody can keep you. It don't matter if you have somebody there. You can uh, say bye, chaperones, and do what you want to do. You know, you call the person up after them chaperones are gone. And so the Lord let me know that, okay, even though I was taught this, um, that you have to be able to um, lean on your relationship with the Lord to keep you. Because nobody's going to keep you. Nobody's going to keep you. Only if you want to be kept. Mm -hmm. So in a relationship, learning who I'm with and then learning me, I should be able to trust them or I shouldn't be in a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't. I, sh I really shouldn't. But um, yeah, you trust that person like they can respect your boundaries. You can respect your boundaries. I don't see why it's a problem with hanging with them. Great point. Great point about, you know, uh, it, it, why being, you know, why being in a relationship you don't trust the individual. Yeah, trust is very important. I just want to interject that real quick and you guys can go ahead and jump in there. Um, for me, I would say that I am, the, the response to both is, uh, yes, I'm okay with Netflix, feel or watching a movie. If I'm in a relationship or if we're getting to know each other, depending on how long we've been getting to know each other, it's a possibility, but not like right off the, like we're still just getting to know each other. But if we're in a relationship, then yeah. And the second question, vacation type of thing. Oh, I'm just <laughs> yeah, I didn't touch on that one. I can't throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so my response to that is also yes uh as long as there's some boundaries in place and we talked about some certain things then i feel there's nothing wrong with it for me i'm talking about me and there's actually reasons behind my both of my yes beyond just hanging out having you know netflix and serial law going on a vacation together so in regards to the first one just being over each other houses or whatever and watching a movie i want to see how they keep things i want to see how things are managed and so there's more behind it than just <laughs> sitting on the couch do they have paper towels in the restroom or do they just like that i'm just saying or do they just put a tile up and that's where i gotta dry my hands 
Or do I know that's being a little deep, but I'm just saying, I'm being real. You said candid, so do they like hand soap versus ball soap to wash their hands? They might get a few extra points from me. I'm impressed when I see a man has hand soap in the bathroom. I'm being real. We okay, talking candid, right? I've never heard this. Um. <laughs> There's sometimes. I there was well this was a few years ago. I was dating someone and they had hand soap in the bathroom. It was such a surprise to me because usually I don't see a man with hand soap. They have bar soap. I ain't trying to trump on anybody. I'm just being real. I like hand soap, liquid soap to wash my hands, not a bar soap. Even when I go to hotels, I'm serious, y'all. I bring my own liquid soap in the little two ounce containers. Or if I'm doing a road trip, I go to the store and buy some hand soap because I don't like using ball soap to wash my hands. So, anyway, <laughs> those are little bitty things that for me it's important. So that way I'll already know certain things. I mean, that, that could be twerks or tweaks or whatever. If he uses bar soap and let's say we decide we're going to be engaged or married, you know, that could be tweaks. But I will, that's a good thing to know in advance. Because what if he don't ever want to give up the bar soap? And I don't ever want to use bar soap. Now we got an issue. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, so I'm for real. So I look at things like that. Like, do you have paper towel? Wow, this is a surprise to me. He has a, a mat in his like bathroom. I'm investigating the <laughs> challenge. So these are important things for me to know. Do he train? Do he have some blinds or you know, I'm just saying these are important things to know. So uh and then the second one, I like to see I'm an adventurous person and I like to, I travel and explore different places. And when I travel, I do not want to eat chicken fillet, Popeyes. Olive Garden, all these type of places. I'm just saying, name it off of you that I can get at home in Texas at home. So I like to see what do he, you know, when we're trying to pick a place to, to eat at, if he's gonna want to be more prone to say, Oh, let's just go to Olive Garden. Why? Why are we doing that? Why we're not trying something new? I like to try new stuff. We're in a new area. Why we're not doing anything? I also need to see if he wants to adventure or do he want to just sit in the room, watch the TV, and chill. We can do that at home. I could have did that at home. These are important things that I need to know. So I most definitely need to go on one trip with the man before we decide that we even talk in engagement. I need to go at least one trip, whether that's a road trip or flight. I need to know how he treats people in the airport. Very important. Some the TSA agents, sometimes they get a little, you know, they have made me upset before, but I handled it appropriately. I need to see how he handles things like that. Because when you're in the airport, sometimes you can get a bit heated. I need to know if he knows how to handle these situations under control. These are important things to know before I decide that, you know, we're talking engagement or marriage. I need to know all this stuff. I need to know, does the TV bother him? Because it don't bother me. I can go sleep with TV on off. I want to know these kind of things. Because some of these things people don't tell you. They just do say what they, want, what you, what they think you want to hear, basically. And I need to observe these kind of behaviors so I can, and he can observe me as well. He's going to be observing me as well to see our comfortability with being with each other. So, yes, most definitely. We need to go somewhere. I need to see if you're okay with stopping somewhere that, that we didn't plan. I'm okay with having a plan, but sometimes I like to just venture. I don't want everything on a vacation plan. No, I don't want to plan everything. And I don't want to be sitting up watching no TV on vacation either. So I definitely am fine with you. That's, that's all I got. Got like hand soap over here. <laughs> I got, I got, no, I'm, I'm joking. I got, I got, I got liquid soap in the kitchen. I got liquid soap in the bathroom. So I'm with you on that. 
Okay. Fair, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm military, so I, I, I uh, appreciate anything, you know, that don't require a lot of work. So um, liquid soap over here. <laughs> All right. All right. So, yeah. Okay, man. But, but but anyhow, um yeah, I think I think to your question, uh Tomel, I think uh your questions rather, uh I think it, the thing that was recurring to me as I was thinking about the question and listen to the others is intentionality. Um when you have intention, um uh, they kind of pair up with the uh boundaries that you have and set for yourself. So earlier, I, I, I may mention of the fact that when I started in um, my relationships in the past, I didn't have boundaries because honestly, I wasn't taught to have them. I just, I mean, I was, you know, I had three brothers besides myself, you know, we, you know, father, home, that sort of thing. I mean, I guess boys are raised differently. Um, I mean, as far as like, because we are not trying to, you know, um, I mean, we're taught to protect ourselves, but we're not trying to, you know, kind of find protection from anybody else. But we just kind of do what we have to do for survival. But once I became or dedicated my life to the Lord, Jesus, I, uh, I began to understand intentionality and how Christ moved when he did everything uh, that he was called to do. There was intention with behind everything he did. So uh, with regards to taking trips... Um, I have in the past, I've had, you know, relationships in the past where we took, we've taken trips, we've gone, you know, out of town, that sort of thing. And I've, I've had, I've even had a couple of scenarios where in the past, further down in the past where I've, uh, well, we would have the same room and there were others where we had the same room, different beds and that sort of thing. But as I've grown in my journey, um, with, uh, the Lord, I understand that intentionality is so important. And if, because I'm I'm red blooded male, so I know and realize if I'm attracted to the woman that I'm with, um, you know, it's anything could happen. So I try to be very, uh, very um, explicit up front about what 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 boundaries that I set for myself and discover understanding what she can um, handle as well. So my 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 belief is unless we're moving in the direction of uh, a serious, uh, you know, relationship and that sort of thing toward uh, marriage, I, I don't move in that direction anymore because of uh, the understanding of what intentionality, uh, how the, 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 just the meaning behind uh, the intentionality and the boundaries that we all set. And uh, yeah, and then also, you know, the Netflix and chill, that is, that's not an issue with me. Uh, I don't see any issue with going over somebody's house and that sort of thing. But then I also got to keep in mind, too, I mean, we're we're busy people. And unless it's a weekend or something like that, I can't see myself staying over too late because I'm, you know, obviously I have a schedule to keep and that sort of thing. Uh, but to uh, doctor's point, I think I have to say uh, th there's, there's other things, you know, you want to discover when you go to their house, you know, that, I mean, I didn't think about the liquid soap, but you know, you also think about how they, I want to keep their bathroom, you know, I want to keep their kitchen. I know my mother always told me that too, my, you know, even, even, you know, growing up as a, as a, as a, a guy, she always taught me, she said, look at her bathroom, look at her kitchen, how she keep her kitchen, you know, does she, you know, does she, you know, leave dishes in the sink? You know, till the next day with food still in them, or she wipe down the refrigerator handle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what kind of mess she got in her, you know, cabinet? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, but you know, just just you know, little things that uh, you know you might consider as you're on the journey together. So, all excellent points. I mean, you guys, I really respect everything that you guys are saying, and so I think that the uh as far as as far as is for me is uh as far as i'm concerned that yeah i don't have a problem with a woman coming over and uh, netflix and chill and, and she can spend the night over the house and all that stuff that's if we're in a relationship now there are certain boundaries of course that you want to set but i think it comes a time i think sometimes you know we as as people of god and as uh susan from christ uh we we're so concerned with not sinning that we really don't enjoy the relationship 
And it does come down to um, being disciplined in your flesh, you know, because I think it's okay to Netflix and chill if you're disciplined in your flesh. It doesn't mean just because she's over at the house. Uh, as we're Netflix and chilling, uh, we headed into the bedroom and then sex is going down. Uh, I'm not saying that it can't, but I'm just saying that uh, I think the fear, I think uh, if we can just concentrate on getting to know the individual and trust in our relationship with God, trust in our flesh. I know sometimes people will say, yeah, you know, the flesh is never saved and you, you can't put any confidence in the flesh, which is true. But like you said, you know yourself. And I love what you guys are saying because, man, Andre and, and, and Alina, what you were saying about, you want to see if that person is nasty, if they keep a nasty house. And I mean, look, I think usually if you're going to invite somebody over to the house, you're going to clean up the house before you invite somebody over. And so I, this is, I would love to come over when I'm, uh, you know, not invited so I can see, is this really how she it keeps her house? Is it clean? Is it, the dishes piled up in the sink? I know she cleaned it before I came, but is this her every day? <laughs> but I never show up at no woman's house unannounced. I always call it before, even if I'm in a relationship, never have done that. But I would love to see how some of these ladies live, because there are some nasty, nasty living people <laughs> out here. Oh, really, it is the truth. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you, and those are things that you need to know. And, and yes, I'm with you on, but yeah, I, I keep hand soap in my bathroom as well. I keep hand soap. And so also when taking these trips, oh, it's a great way to really get to know somebody. I mean, you take like a, a four hour, I say a four to six hour trip, you will learn about a person's habits very quickly. Uh, you will learn a lot about a person if you take that trip. Now, I would say take the trip with a trusted source of somebody that you're in a relationship with. But you find out so much how they uh, interact with people. Like you were saying, Dr. Lena, uh, I know as Andre was saying too, uh, she made some good points. So I just think um, when you think about everything and think about being together at each other's house and taking these trips, it's really, you're just really trying to get information. Uh, and so I, I love taking beach trips. You know, I love the beach and I love being on the beach. And, you know, and some people even I know even Andre was saying, because I grew up in a church of God in Christ and boy, they are strict. Boy, you can't wear no uh, bathing suits at the, the church picnic to swim and all that kind of stuff. And I need to know, you know, because I don't mind my woman wearing a bathing suit. You know, I don't mind. But some people, oh, she. No, but she's saved and sanctified. No, she shouldn't be wearing no, no bathing suit out there. You know, all that stuff. But you don't know a person's mentality. So, oh, yeah, I'm a, let's go to the beach. I want to see all that. Let's, let's see how you're coming out there on the beach. And uh, you're just getting information. And I think the main thing is being disciplined in your flesh. Because I think if you have a strong personal relationship with Jesus Christ, I'm not worried about, you know, putting myself in a situation where, I'm going to sin, and uh, just because I'm close to her, we're hugging and kissing, that sex is going to go down. And I think that's a concern with people being alone at each other's house. I think some people are not disciplined in their flesh, and some people, it's hard uh, for others more than others. And so you guys make, make some wonderful, wonderful points. And uh, can I add can you, go ahead, jump in there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can I add any stories of what you're saying? Um, sure. So I told you guys I've been engaged three times. So the second engagement, we uh, second person I was engaged to, we did go on a um, day trip. Um, one of my family members had got married in another city, and it was like a four-hour drive. And so while we're in the car, we're having a conversation, and um, then they quickly get on their headset, and I'm like, okay. We're talking, and now you want to put it on your headset, and they're like, "Well, I need to listen to this preach word," and I'm like, "Okay, okay." <laughs> like, so this is a four-hour drive, and the conversation is just abruptly cut short, and I don't know what's going on. So that was kind of like a boring ride, you know. And then once we get there for the wedding and stuff, um, they're they're cool. I'm watching them interact with people and. You know they're they're being friendly to my family, and so I'm just like, okay, maybe this is a family family person. You know, maybe they just had a little bit of issues with the communication on the the ride because it was our first uh, trip, and it was a day trip too. So I was like, okay, let me give them a second chance. Watch how they interact with my family. I was like, check, 
then it came to the reception and there was some you know alcohol and i was like okay they're gonna have a drink okay now they they have a couple more drinks now they're outside drinking with a family member okay <laughs> it is time to go back home and they want to drive and it's like oh Oh, okay. So they're they're a little more intoxicated while driving. Yeah, no, no. Mm. So that engagement revealed, you know, that this person wasn't for me. You know, that there was some underlying um, addictions there. Wow. And so I, I see what you're talking about when you go on a trip with a person. You can see that, and that was just a day trip. We went up four hours and came back the same day, four hours. Long day. I will say that, but it, it did. It revealed certain things. Um, it, it definitely did. And I, I did get it after that. I would. I wish I could say I ended the relationship right after that trip. I didn't. I didn't. And I gave him another benefit of the doubt. And this is where compromising your boundaries can get you in trouble. You know, mm-hmm. this is where you do need to have that boundary where it's like, okay, this person gets, they turn up when they drink the alcohol. They don't have um, they don't have a temperance on that. So cut the relationship. And I was thinking like, well, let me give him a second chance. And after a while, just, it just revealed itself like, yeah, that's an addiction. I seen it on the day trip. I should have just immediately cut it off. And yeah. And going forward, I made sure, okay, the third time I got engaged, that person does not have any addictions, you know, and it's okay if, Maybe they may have a glass of wine or whatnot like that. They don't even, they may have a sip or something, but they don't really drink like that. They don't even go to the club, anything like that. So I set up that boundary for my next relationship. Like, yeah, I don't want them to be like that. I don't want them really even to like alcohol. And that that helped me, you know, that helped me in the next relationship. Like, yeah, definitely going on trips can really reveal a person. It can, and it showed me myself too that I am big on communication. You know, that if I'm traveling with someone, no, we don't have to talk incessantly, but at least let me know, like, you want to put on your headsets and listen to something because I thought that was rude. And I was seeing that in myself, like, I instantly got mad, like, wow, this dude just shut me off here. So it can, it can reveal not only about that other person, but about yourself too. Man, so true, Audra, man. You make some great points about finding out people's addictions. And I've been on trips with women and found out a lot of different addictions and what they were addicted to, uh, you know, smoking and all that kind of stuff. And like, wow, you know. So uh, you really get to to find out some things about a person uh, when you do take those trips. And so, like I said, to each his own, I know everybody's not comfortable with it. But as you see, everybody on the panel has... uh, uh, a different perspective on things. And then we also share some of the same perspectives concerning the reasons why. And so I want to give you guys a chance. And, and let me say this real quick. And man, uh, you find out too, this, I know this kind of petty a little bit, but if the person snores, oh my goodness. I, look, if you stay the night with a person and, or they come over and they sleep, you, man, that's snoring. I can't, I'm a light sleeper. That loud snoring, it will really disturb me. Go ahead, jump in there, Audrey. I know you wanted to say something. <laughs> oh no, no, I was just, I was agreeing with you, and uh, and also I was just gonna make a, a small little point. Yeah, go to, ahead. To the bathing suit uh, thing, uh, yeah, I don't have any issues with that. Um, uh, I, I, I think that's actually a matter of see, I, I think, I don't think there's anything wrong with having a boundary for that. But me personally, I don't have that issue. Um, I don't I don't think being legalistic either is the answer. I think I think if you want to enjoy and whatever that looks like, as long as it's not harming someone else's uh, freedom or doing the right thing, then I think that's all right. I wouldn't, you know, I mean, yeah, she looks good in a bathing suit. Could have put it on, baby. We good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brothers want to see that, too. Brothers want to see. You know, your shape and you look good in the bathing suit, just all that stuff. And so uh, a lot of stuff we take a look at. We're we're looking, we're watching all the time. Yeah. And before I I get to the. Yeah, go ahead. I think uh, also on the bathing suit thing is for as a woman, I think it's important for women to make sure that they feel comfortable, not just if, you know, or 
a man saying that she looks good in it, but do they feel they're comfortable? Do they know their wealth or uh, their worth and they're comfortable and confident enough in their self to put on the bathing suit? Because actually, and I say that because I'm a part of a few uh, travel groups and it comes up sometimes that some of the women don't want to put on a bathing suit because they're not comfortable with their body. And so if you're not comfortable with yourself that's an indicator as well i think because sometimes my personal opinion so i mean i'll put one on you know one piece two pieces there i mean but i'm just saying yeah <laughs> sometimes, sometimes <laughs> a person doesn't want to it's not because they're just trying to be modest around a man sometimes it may be something they're just not comfortable with doing either just want to throw that in and, and actually, that's a good point. And I was kind of veering off to that point, doctor, because uh, I, th I think I think personally, as a, a, a you know, as a guy, I definitely know that anything a woman does naturally is because she's comfortable doing it. So yeah. whether it be whether it be what she's wearing, or, or, I mean, who she's talking to, who she's dealing with. So I know how to read between the lines in that regard. So very true. Yeah, I, I like what you said, uh, comfortability. And I know for me, modesty is very much the key. And um, yeah, I definitely, I'm like, no, baby, Sue. And then I keep thinking, like, what Tamel says, my background, too, holiness is like, no, we don't do that. <laughs> Sometimes they don't even want you to go swimming, even by yourself. Like, they're like, nope. And um, now the church I attend now, they say go swimming, but they prefer that you don't swim with the person that you're dating because they're like, that's still showing nakedness. And I, and I can respect that. You know, I can respect that. And so I haven't. I haven't gone swimming with um, the person that I'm engaged with. Um, none, of, none of the people I've been engaged with, but they didn't have a problem with that, though. So I think that's like something that has to be agreed in a relationship if both people feel that way if they feel comfortable to go swimming and they know that okay no fornication will occur with them but for other people it may just be you know how they feel with holiness and um how they view themselves too because that can be like a self-esteem issue as well Really and I love you brought that point up, Andrea, because uh, we got sisters going into the, the swimming pool with jean skirts, those long jean skirts <laughs> on, going into the swimming pool. Come on, oh, man. Oh, Some of this stuff is unnecessary. It's not that biblical, that but it's just church in. talk. It's just doctrine and it's church talk. Get that nonsense out of here. But that's how I'm man, not that's doing nonsense. All that. uh, you know, because I understand, yeah, you don't want people to say, but what we got? We gonna be hunting in, in the swimming pool? Oh, come on, man. I mean, you know, it's just I know they want to prevent sin, and like I said, we have a hole in this background, but that that is not biblical. It's got nothing to do with the Bible, but it's preference and what you're being taught. And so I do respect it. Now, don't get me wrong, I respect it, but I ain't do. Listen, I ain't teaching that, and I ain't doing it. Never did. And the ladies that I was going out with, they had on those bathing suits. I'm with you, Andre. Put on that bathing suit, baby. Put on that two piece. <laughs> Did you want to jump in there, Joseph, before we um you know, I just wanted to yeah, say that y'all make some really good points, man. And I think it does come down to preference, uh, because depending up, upon the the guy, like you know, uh, there's two other guys on the panel, or you know, you uh, uh Elder Tamel and you Andre, um, it's hard for us to control what we're thinking, right? So like if the woman wearing a two piece and you see some things starting to slide out of place, where's that mind going? You know what I'm saying? So, like, in terms of that, we, we do have to be mindful as men, I, and I think as women as well, how are we are we being a stumbling block for our for anybody else? Not just the me, the people at the pool, you know what I'm saying? And that's, that's that gets a little tricky when it comes to swim trunks, when it comes to the two-piece, um, but but I'm with y'all, man. It, 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 it is, it, you know, if you get in the pool, you're not going to get in the pool with clothes on, you know, for, you know, shirt and jacket, and, you know what I'm saying? Before, oh, but there are some outfits, there are some swim outfits that will make you double take, and you're not double taking because you didn't see it before, you want to see it again. So, you know, I, I think there's a there's a balance, and, you know, with some of the designs, it makes it really tough to, to for that mind, especially if you have a background of, of being a, a fornicator like myself, 
it's hard for me to not say I'm not sending in my mind. I may not outwardly send, but what about the inward part? So I, I think it's, it, this is a tough question, man, to say yay or nay on either side. But I, I see the I see the arguments that are being made. So that, it's tough, man. It's, it's really tough. Yeah, communication, I communication. Struggle with porn before, and so it's kind of like them seeing anything kind of just set them off, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you do, you walk a fine line. And that was also part of why they pick a woman like me who would be more modest. And I, I ended up not choosing them. And they went on and married a woman that was a little bit more modest than I am. Mm -hmm. um, because that was their preference. They just knew themselves. Like, I, they couldn't handle a lot of different things, you know, before marriage. You know, and now it's kind of like they can handle whatever because they're married now. <laughs> Yeah. No, that's true. I mean, it, but then it's it, it, it's it creates that fine balance. I mean, okay, well, what's acceptable and what's unacceptable? And I think that comes down to back what we were saying earlier about having the conversation because what may what I may be able to, to handle, the next may not, you know, and vice versa. So um, my my fiance is very modest, um, and it and it it's tailored for myself based upon the mistakes that I made in my past. And so I think having those constant conversations, saying, hey, when you wore that. That that is that 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 triggered something in me that doesn't need to be triggered at this moment. So just continually having that conversation based upon the preferences, based upon the thresholds, based upon the boundaries that's been created, I think is so important. Yeah. Absolutely. I think Andre was uh he was saying a minute ago, I heard him saying communication, and it just made me think how important I mean it is in a lot of things, and I believe Joseph was even saying how it's evolving, it's constantly it's changing. You're going to have to continually, I think, um, just have conversations about different things because you know, things can change. They evolve. And so for me, if I, uh, I think Lynn was putting it in, the, uh, she put a comment about me and be mindful of wearing gray sweatpants. I was just going to comment <laughs> and she, about that. <laughs> and, so, uh, and so for me, I think it's just a matter of communicating what a person likes and dislikes and kind of, you know, what they think to turn them on and we're, you know, having candid conversations. And um, and so for me, if I go to a beach, I'm going to have on a swimsuit. I'm not having no pants on and I have a cover up, cover up or whatever. And I try to be modest. And so even in certain situations, like a week and a half ago, uh, one of the church members had a party, like a pool gathering over the house. And they was like, bring bring your swimsuits, bring, you know, and then they have a basketball court, too. They was like, bring tennis shoes if you want to get on the basketball court. And so I was like, oh, no. You know, and I think that's also important, knowing, I mean, where I'm at, I'm not going to, I did not wear no swimsuit. <laughs> I put on jeans and a t-shirt. And what I did was, excuse me, because I just rolled up my jeans and I just put my legs in the water. Because I'm not going to be around a group of church members with the swimsuit on. So I think it just depends on where I'm at, too. And then for me, I travel solo a lot. And so I'm definitely going to have a swimsuit on. So because <laughs> nobody should be like right there or with me. Um, but I guess it just depends on my environment as well sometimes. So if I'm going around a whole group of church members, I'm not wearing no swimsuit, even if we're going to be by the pool. I'm going to just, you know, like I did a, a few, a week and a half ago, I just had on jeans and I had a t-shirt on and I didn't plan on swimming. If I want to swim, that's not the place for me to swim. Wait and do that. <laughs> and I just put my feet in the water and chilled. And that was that. Was that because I'm not about to be around a group of church members with a swimsuit on. So I guess it also, for me, I think depends on your environment. And so maybe some of the trips that if I'm in a relationship, we don't have to really do beach trips. We can do other trips. There are so many other places to go than just to be. And so uh, to explore other places, I think that's important too, just doing your environment knowing what you know what you like what you don't like and your are like uh, Lena was saying about sweatpants that don't really get to me but sometimes certain like basketball pants do shorts do so i'm just saying <laughs> so, 
So I'll, 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 speak, I'll, speak, I'll speak for myself. I may speak for the other fellas on the panel. We ain't wearing no gray sweatpants in no pool. I mean, okay. we ain't jumping in no water with no gray sweatpants. Nah, come on. <laughs> I think they talk about on like the basketball court, the football field. Like, you know, some, some dudes, uh, myself, sometimes I wear gray. But then also, again, it comes down to, well, what am I trying to portray? Or what, what, is, what is my my attire communicating? You know, and I think that also is something that we always have to be conscious about, especially just like what Doctor was saying about being around a certain environment, church going people. You know, there's a reason why we're not comfortable wearing that uh, attire around them because there's a stigma that they may be judgmental as to what we're wearing. You know, and so we have to also remember that you know there's other people that don't know Christ that's looking at us like, well, those people that say that they know Christ, I don't see the difference between them and those that don't. And so in order for us to be able to not destroy the witness, we definitely have to be conscious of what we're wearing and what our, our attire is communicating at all times. It's difficult, that's, but it's, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a test. That's a good point, yeah. Joe. That's a really good point because because uh, it's easy to get kind of isolated in a relationship and you're trying to communicate your preferences and your boundaries and that sort of thing. But you, you brought up a good point, Joe, about... Uh, if we're if we're living and walking this journey, then we have to be mindful of the people around us, including those who are not, you know, a part of the faith. You know, so uh, that's very important. Good point. That's, that's true because I mean, even though we're in a relationship, we're still children of God. We still have to, you know, let our light shine. And I think sometimes we can forget that and get lost in relationships. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think. Uh, I think you guys make some wonderful points, but I think we as men and women of God, we have to hold our own selves accountable concerning our thoughts because if, if we see somebody that has a bathing suit on and this woman has a nice body, or if you see, like uh, Lena was saying, a brother, you know, he take off his shirt, got a nice uh, chest like myself, and then people uh, get excited, and then, you know, but I'm just te I'm just talking <laughs> But listen, what I'm saying is, what I'm, <laughs> what I'm saying is, we even though we are witnesses in everything that we do, I like what Joseph said. We're witnesses in everything that we do, but we have to take onus of our thoughts because if us just seeing a woman in a swimming suit is uh, making us around and making us uncomfortable, or we can't handle it. We got to check ourselves as men and women of God because that shouldn't be. No matter what a person is wearing, I don't care if it's skin tight. I don't care if it's showing all the curves. If we can't control our flesh and if we have a problem and we look at that, and of course, I know it's a natural thing maybe to get aroused or be attracted to, but if we can't handle it, we'll, we can't go to the swimming pool around the saints and the saints are judgmental complaining because these ladies look good. These ladies look good in their swimming suits and stuff. And you got a lot of older women and a lot of the mothers hating because they ain't got no bodies like that. But I'm just saying we have to really think about us individually. Like, why is this bothering me? I don't care if the woman is in worship and praising God and she got on tight pants. My mind and my focus should be on worshiping and praising God too. I know everybody is not disciplined like that, but we got to take account for ourselves and the thoughts that we have and, and the discipline that we have in our own flesh because it doesn't matter what a person is wearing at any point, anywhere. If that's going to cause us to err or cause us to be uncomfortable and wanting to leave and all that stuff, that's a problem. That That's just my perspective and my opinion. But what you said, uh, Joe, makes a lot of sense because we're witnesses everywhere we go. And so I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this time goes fast. <laughs> this time goes really quick when you're having a, a great conversation. And so... Um, uh, this has been a wonderful conversation. It's been great, and we did go over our time, which is okay. Like I, I did tell you guys, we may go up because the conversation it gets good. Uh, but I want to give you guys an opportunity uh, to answer the last question, and then tell everybody how they can get a hold of you and how they can contact you. But the, the question is, is what we started with, and you can answer it quickly, and then let us know how they people can get a hold of you or connect with you, business, ministry, personally. Um, has the boundaries kept you guys single? Are, are the boundaries keeping you guys single? Or do you believe that? Or, or have they? And you can answer that quickly. We're going to start from the top to the bottom, Joseph to Dr. Lena, and then we'll go ahead and uh, end it. 
I have to say, uh, first and foremost, uh, panelists, uh, my fellow panelists, uh, Ellis Mel, appreciate the opportunity. This was great. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I've been on panels before, um, but this 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 was this was special. Um, I, I didn't know what to expect. This is my first time on your show, but this is awesome. It's real <laughs> candid. I love it. Um, for myself, I believe it kept me single for a long time. Uh, because my boundaries were based on fear. Whenever you have something that's based in fear, you have to examine, is this fear rational or is it irrational? A lot of the times it's an irrational fear, the fact that um, I didn't have boundaries before, and that was the reason why I made the poor relationship choices that I made. I was with incompatible people, and it wasn't more so that they were bad people, they just weren't the right people for me. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them have gotten married or in successful relationships after me. And I used to look and say, wow, like, I wonder why that happened. I really didn't know myself. I didn't have boundaries for myself. And then I'm expecting them to just get the boundaries that I'm thinking that they're, they should know already. A lot of the times I think that's, that's really the, the issue there. Um, for myself, I also had to realize, uh, I didn't answer the second part of your question about the going on trips together. I had to realize that sin doesn't have a time. Um, here in North Carolina, a lot of the times uh, they were basically closing things down when I had COVID. I was like, were they thinking that COVID uh, had a time, a bedtime? You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times uh, for myself, I had to realize that the boundaries that I was setting based upon time was based upon the reference point that I was committing sin. Now that I'm no longer, uh, my attitude towards sin has changed because now I'm, I'm new in Christ. Now, I'm, now I've renewed my mind daily. I'm asking the Lord to renew my mind every single day. Romans 12, 2. Renewing our mind, not conforming to the world. Being able to check those emotions whenever I look at something and or look at a female in a, in a bathing suit or, or in a, an outfit. Making sure that I'm taking inventory of these thoughts is really what's key. And that's what really set me free from those times where I felt like, hey, I had these boundaries. And a lot of it was based on fear. So I'm encouraging anybody out there that... Uh, has boundaries to check the boundaries and understand the root of them. Are they rooted in fear? If they're rooted in fear, there's something that you need to really uh, become more self-aware in yourself and take this time being single. If you're still single, take this time really getting to know yourself, I think is all the more important, which is something that we talked about earlier. So if anybody wants to reach out to me, reach out to me on my YouTube channel. It's in my name, uh, Joseph Holden Third, um, and, and to be able to connect with our ministry, we'd love to have you. Um, thank you again, uh, LXML. Thank you all panelists. Y'all made some really great points and uh, really made me think about some stuff. I really learned uh, a lot from your, your different perspectives. So thank you for your uh, being uh, candid. That's awesome, Joseph. I mean, you have me rethink of my boundaries, even with being in a relationship and just making sure that it's not based on fear, you know, as well as processing what I'm thinking about, you know, and um, how I'm governing myself, even in a relationship, as well as thinking about that other person, too. Because sometimes in a relationship, I'm going to speak for myself, I'll think so much about what I'm thinking about and how I feel, what my boundaries are, that I'm not thinking about how the boundaries affects that other person. So that's a very good point. I came on here thinking like, oh, okay, I'm gonna help somebody else and it ended up helping me. It was like a full circle. I'm really appreciative of Tomel for this. This is really good. And, um, you know, if anyone wants to reach out to me, my name is Ms. Drea Moore on Facebook. I also have my group. It's Singles Ministry United for Christ. You can always just shoot me an inbox there. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited about this group, this ministry that Tamil has. I believe that it's expanding. And we need to have topics like this because it makes us think about ourselves as well as another person. Because, I mean... Some of us singles, we really do want to get married. We don't want to remain single for the entire duration. And part of why we are single is because of our boundaries. You know, us thinking so much about ourselves, trying to protect our heart, you know, from past experiences that going forward seems kind of scary. It really does because we don't know ourselves. We don't know that other person. And generally that's from not having the real conversation. So I, I applaud you to Mel for having this, this authentic type group and creating a safe place. A lot of times we don't have real conversations because we've been shamed and guilt tripped. You know, like, oh, you shouldn't think like that. Oh, you shouldn't do that. So then you're like, okay, uh, I should do this, but yeah, I'm gonna do it, you know, on the side in the dark. 
but um having that authentic safe place to be yourself really helps you know and being around uh, different other people who could give you another perspective on things so you can come out of your bubble you can kind of i don't want to say come out of your boundary but come out of a protective wall that's really not set from god but set from your own fear yeah so thank you thank you to mel and thank you everyone else for um, being here and offering up your perspectives <clears throat> yeah uh that was a great um great time that i had here thank you very much uh, to the host and to the panel fellow panel members um now, to answer your question, Tomela, are my boundaries keeping me single? Hmm. Liquid soap. I don't know. Liquid soap and <laughs> dish soap. <laughs> Anything? Nah, I don't think so. I don't think I personally, you know what? I'm, I'm open minded to actually what uh, Andrea said and what Joe just said um, really sparked the. Uh, just the thought in my mind because coming into this i didn't think i had any real uh, boundaries keeping me single and quite frankly i haven't even thought much about it but um what you just said what you two just said uh brought some shed some light on the fear aspect uh i didn't realize i had any fears but as a as a believer and as 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 you know we've uh, i can speak for the bulk of us saying that we've all made mistakes in the past and, things and sometimes we try to try so hard not to make the mistake and try so hard not to trip that you trip <laughs> right. or, you th or you're constantly thinking about tripping so the idea is just to walk the stairs that God creates for you and just keep on going where he says that I, I heard a saying once that when God uh, orders you the step ladder he, he, he makes each step this one at a time he doesn't show you the whole staircase he he shows you one at a time so you have to trust the lord in order to make that even uh, materialize so we don't have fear as believers so we're, we're we're moving forward um so i've had a great time uh thanks for the invite once again it's been great um as far as get a hold of me i have a few things in the works um i'm actually uh, one thing i didn't mention in the beginning is that i'm I'm on a journey and en enrolled in uh, real estate, of course. So I'm looking to get my real estate license. So I'm actually uh, going to have a, a website in, in the works here soon. Um, I do have Facebook. If anyone wants to add me, feel free to uh, message me if you want to. That's great. Um, I, I have you find me on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Okay, so when we started the conversation and my response uh, to the question was yes and sometimes, and now I think about it more, um, my response is no, and more so no uh, because, and I, it still could be sometimes, but more so no because I feel that I, I'm, I'm very good at making sure I communicate things ahead of time, and it just must Part of it also is must just be my season to still be single. Uh, and I say that because if I am, if there's people that are kind of like, I think Andrea was saying about uh, just respecting your, what you say, like different things. Like if I don't want to go to the movies at 1230, you know, then I don't want to go to the movies at 1230. 7 p.m. is what I, you know, if I'm saying certain things as far as space boundaries, time boundaries. Now I'm okay with the um hugging and things like that of that nature if it's not on the like a, if it's a first time meeting i'm okay with the hood just the hood not we gotta be kissing and all that no but that's i mean certain things change over time if i'm in a relationship so for me it just depends on if i'm just initially getting to know someone or in a relationship with them so that's why i would say no more so now because if I am uh, communicating things to them, to the man I'm getting to know, and it must just not be a good fit. We're not compatible. I, excuse me, on, on certain things, if he's not, if I say I don't want to do certain things, or if he say he don't want to do certain things, and we're not able to compromise or negotiate after we've talked about it, 
then it honestly must not be a good fit. Um, and so now I'm more so that's why I was leaning towards sometimes because it kind of for me it could depend. But I feel that I'm very vocal and candid and uh honest and open and communicate with the person to let them know my interests, my likes, my dislikes, having hand soap, not bar soap, you know, um, not going to Olive Garden if we're traveling. I mean, I a breadstick could be okay, but I'm just saying. If we on a vacation, we ain't got to go to the same place we can go at home. So I'm very vocal with all that ahead of time before we go on the trip. So just certain things that I think if I'm communicating different things and they're communicating to me, then um, it just must still be my season to be single and take some of these trips by myself, solo travel. So that's all I have on that. And then as far as getting uh, in touch with me, I'm in the group SSNK uh, right now. <laughs> I've been going under my nickname. <laughs> I, I think mostly because I'm like, like, I'm off right now, y'all. So I've just been trying to be incognito a little bit. <laughs> but, but so when y'all see my name pop back up, but right now it says Sunshine. But under my heading, it does say my name. But I'm in the SSNK group, and then if this this is tagged, it should be tagged with uh, my name as well. And so, so anyway, so that's how you can find me. Um, and that's about all. I think I answered. Oh, and yes, I just really do thank you, Camille, for having me or thinking of, uh, you know, me being on the panel. And I do appreciate being on here. And I think everyone else, y'all have some good nuggets to share and um, for me to think about and everything like that. So, yeah, thank you. All of you guys are welcome. It's, it's been my pleasure to have you guys on the show. I mean, you guys have been wonderful, made some wonderful points, dropped some jewels and some gems uh, in this discussion. And for me to answer the question, I don't think my boundaries are keeping me single, but what I did learn from you guys, there's more reasons uh, why, you know, a woman may have boundaries. So it helped me to understand and kind of learn like, okay, this is maybe, she's not being funny or acting shady. It's just that there's some boundaries in place for reasons. So I appreciate you guys on that. I really do appreciate that. For what my perspective has been opened up and enlightened as well. Uh, and so we all, we talked about tonight uh, just to sum it up is making sure that we have open and honest communication, uh, examining ourselves, uh, knowing ourselves, and also knowing the other person that we're involved in and having consistent, open, honest communication at all times. And I think that will help bridge the gap, uh, that communication gap between men and women, that consistent, consistent, you know, conversation, consistent communication about everything. And so I appreciate you guys. I appreciate everything that you had to say, your thoughts and your perspectives. This has been wonderful. This has been great. And from the comments, you can see that people were engaged. They're still engaged. And, you know, uh, we could go on and on and on, but uh, we have to end it at, at some point. And so, um, of course, I'll have you guys on uh, and, on different uh, discussions in the future. And so I'll definitely have you guys as guests uh, once again. And so I would say this, please go out and support uh, Fruit Bear Ministries. I have a ministry. I have set up an account uh, to help people who are homeless and those who are facing eviction. So uh, you can give a dollar. I'm not asking for any money for this particular discussion or anything like that, but just to support the ministry as far as helping these families, uh, you know, that are getting evicted that are going to become homeless. And so you can, you know, donate any time or whatever. The Lord lays on your heart as far as for that particular ministry, not this discussion, but that ministry to help uh, those who are, are homeless and are facing eviction. But I am Elder Tamel Brown, uh, Fruit Bear Ministries. I am also the founder of Single Save with No Kids. Uh, and so if you'd like to be a part of the group, uh, feel free to send a member request. We'll review it and then we'll add you as a member. But it is exclusive to... Uh, men and women who don't have any kids. That's our niche. But there are some other wonderful groups that I'm a part of and some other wonderful groups that you can be a part of and join as well. And I appreciate all the groups. I appreciate all the support from the other groups. I appreciate 
uh, my family and friends. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, SSNK, for your continued support over the years. I appreciate you guys. And so, hey, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's it. And so uh, we love you with the love of the Lord Jesus. I believe I speak for everybody else. I love you with the love of the Lord Jesus. Keep trusting in the Lord. Keep depending on the Lord Jesus for everything that you need. God will give you the desires of your heart if you just trust in him, lean not onto your own understanding, and in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. And also, I want to leave you with a scripture, Ephesians 3 and 20. Uh, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. It's one of my favorite scriptures that anything that we can think of or anything that we ask, God can do way beyond and above any of that. And so uh, God bless you guys. And we're saying goodbye. We love you. We love you with the love of the Lord Jesus. Bye. Bye.